Uh, okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to talk about uh, installing and running a first uh, few little programs uh, using the Rust programming language. Uh, I think it's very exciting stuff, brand new programming language and a really uh, interesting language, I think. Uh, before we get started, I want to say that uh, I wrote and recorded a song called Perfect Storm and I'll leave a link in the uh, video description. You can go over and have a listen to me trying to sing. <laughs> so the other thing that I want to say is a big thank you to the uh, supporters of the channel. Yeah, the patrons. Thank you very much. Okay, so Rust. What in the world is Rust? What's Rust? Well, uh, Rust is a curly brace language in uh, a similar vein to C and C++, your JavaScripts, Java, C Sharp, that sort of thing. Uh, it uses curly braces to delineate code blocks. Um, yeah, pretty much the same as those older languages. Uh, Rust actually started life in about 2010, uh, but it wasn't until uh, 2015, I think, that we got to version 1. Yeah, so Rust, the language Rust, is really, really new in terms of programming languages. Uh, it's about four years old. So Rust is a low-level system language in, in much the same way that uh, your C and C++ are, these things are designed for speed. Uh, you could say that the, the design objective for Rust is to uh, address some of the difficulties that are involved uh, in programming with these other low-level languages. So there's a lot of pitfalls that you can run into when you're programming these low-level languages. And so Rust is a modern uh, language designed to fix, I guess, or address uh, some of the problems that uh, programmers have when they're coding in other low-level languages like C and uh, C++. Yeah, so one of the design features of Rust is uh, towards memory safety. Uh, it's also designed for concurrency and multi-threading, which I think is really important. If you look at um, a language like C++, uh, nowadays it has uh, STD threads, but for a very long time uh, it didn't have really any uh, standard way uh, of achieving multi-threading. Yeah, so the thing is that C and C++, they were designed before uh, multi-threading really hit the mainstream. Yeah, so, so one, of the, one of the design objectives of, of Rust is uh, that it's designed uh, specifically towards uh, simple and easy, fast multi-threading. <laughs> uh, so today what we're going to look at is uh, just the basics. We're going to look at how to uh, download and install Rust, and then we're going to run a couple of little applications. Uh, hopefully, hopefully all goes well. Hopefully it's interesting too. Okay, so first things first, let's get ourselves Rust. If you uh, head over to your favorite web browser, uh, I'm using uh, Nobody Cares, and if you type into Google or uh, Xquick or DuckDuckGo or whatever, uh, install Rust, um, you should find uh, this web page just here, install Rust programming language. And we'll click on that one, that first uh, thing there, www.rustlang.org. Okay, so what we've got to do is get Rust up in it. Now that's the main installer for Rust. So if you just click on the uh, little purple uh, box just there and save that somewhere. Uh, I've actually already installed this, but I might as well go through the, the motions. Okay, so open up the folder where that downloaded to. Mine is uh, here on the D drive downloads. You want to double click Rust up and just type one, proceed with the installation as the default. So you can customize things if you want, but uh, otherwise just hit one. Okay, so once you've finished uh, installing Rust, uh, what you wanna do is open up a command prompt. So uh, Rust integration with IDEs is not great at the moment, but hopefully this will be something that uh, the coming years will really offer programmers. Anyway, uh, we wanna open up a, a command prompt. Uh, okay, so the easiest way to open up a command prompt is uh, just to hit the Windows button on your keyboard, little flag button and uh, R at the same time, you'll get this little run box and then you type CMD for command. And you should get something like this. Okay, so in order to figure out if Rust actually installed properly, one simple thing that you can do is type cargo version or dash dash version. Uh, that'll tell you your version of cargo. Okay, so, so Cargo is, is the Rust package manager. It helps us with versioning and it also helps us uh, create applications as well as compile and run them, uh, as we'll soon see. So the first thing that we're gonna do to make our first little Rust application, uh, I'm gonna make a new directory. I'm gonna go to the desktop. Let's see what we've got. I always hit DIR. All right, so to make a new directory, we can just go MKDIR and then we can type something like, um, I don't know, like uh, Rust example, something like that. 
Okay, now that we've got ourselves a little folder to hold our project, what we want to do is type cargo and then new and then whatever we want to name our project. So I might just do uh, Rust. Okay, so Cargo has actually made our project. And if I just minimize this a little bit, if I just minimize all of this stuff a little bit, uh, so we can see over here on the desktop, uh, okay, so you can see my whole desktop here. Uh, it's a little bit, there you going, but um, <laughs> at any rate, if you look at your desktop, uh, you should see the uh, directory that you made. So if we just double click on that, and we double click on Rust example. This right here is what Cargo built for us when we made our new application. So if you double click on source, uh, you should see main.rs. Now that's the main source file just there. Uh, but before we before we get that open, what we might do is just type uh, cd uh, Rust example and cd into that folder. And then we want to type Cargo run and hit enter. Okay, so what you'll see is a bunch of information there on uh, the compilation, how things went, if there's any errors and that sort of thing. But uh, everything seems to have gone fine. It says finished, dev, unoptimized, all this sort of stuff. And then it says, hello world. Okay, so that's our very first Rust program just there. Uh, admittedly, Cargo actually wrote it, but um, let's go in and see how that code actually looks. Okay, so if you find your main.rs file and you drag and drop that onto any sort of... Uh, plain text editor that you like. Uh, I'm, I personally like Programmer's Notepad, but there is another one called uh, Notepad++. Uh, Notepad++ is quite good. Uh, so is Programmer's Notepad. Okay, so this is the code just here for the program. So if you've ever done any programming before in C or C++, this should look pretty self-explanatory for you, but let's just go through it. So the first line just there, fn main, uh, that's the entry point for the program. So main is a function, and as soon as the program runs, uh, it's actually the entry point. So this is where the uh, CPU is going to jump to before it uh, starts actually executing our program. Uh, FN just stands for function. Uh, then we've got a curly brace, which opens up a code block, and another curly brace down here, which closes the code block. And inside the code block, we've got a single statement, print ln, uh, exclamation point, and then hello world. So that's actually a macro. Yeah, but that's all the program is, just there. So let's have a bit of a play, shall we? Uh, all right, so I just wanted to go through a couple of little examples of things that we can do. So what we might do is make another function up here. I might just call it uh, do something. Like that. Uh, okay, so it's a convention in Rust, uh, as, a, as by the uh, Rust stations. They call the... <laughs> They call programmers of Rust, or enthusiasts of Rust, I guess. They call, the, they call themselves um, Rust stations, which I think is quite cool. Uh, it's a convention to use what's called snake case, and that's this one just here. Yeah, so you just kind of write in lowercase, and uh, whenever you're supposed to put a space, you just put an underscore. Uh, so if you can, it's probably a good idea to stick to snake case when you're coding in Rust. So as not to make the Rust stations sad. Okay, but we could go in here, print ln. Uh, I'm in a function, exclamation point. And down here, we could call the function with uh, just its name. Something like that. And if we just hit control S to save and we come back to our cargo and we type cargo run. There you go. Yeah, cargo just built our little program and it now says I'm in a function. So we just successfully called a function, which is quite cool. Uh, another couple of little things. Um, C++ style comments work just fine. So double slash, uh, this is a line comment. Yeah, so whenever the compiler sees a line uh, or these double slashes, it ignores everything to the right. Yeah, and you can also do the long comments. So something like this is a very long comment. Yeah, something like that. So slash star, then you write your comment and then star slash. Everything between that slashes and the stars will be ignored. It's a comment. All right, so in order to prove that that's actually going to be ignored, what we can do is run our program again. Yeah, there you go. Exactly the same output as before. Our comments have been ignored. Thank you, Rust. All right, but before we go, I want to do one final example and show something slightly strange about Rust. Let's make ourselves a variable. All right, so we'll go let uh, x equal 90, just like that. And in our print line, what we might do is just print out the value of x. So to print out the value of a variable in Rust or in the print line uh, macro, what you do is you say uh, x is, 
and then open close curly brackets and then you put a comma and you type your variable so so this right here um the variable that we've supplied here outside of the string uh, will actually be or the value of it will be placed where these curly brackets are yeah so if we had more variables we could just put in more curly brackets and we could have uh, x y z something like that yeah all right but to print one variable x we'll just do something like that we'll hit save and we'll come back over to cargo and let's see what happens x is 90 well that makes a lot of sense let's change x to 45 x equals 45 we'll hit save ah uh, it didn't work it didn't work why didn't it work well it didn't work because by default variables in rust are immutable which means they can't be changed uh conceptually it sort of means if we say that x is 90 then x is 90 we can't later on say that it's 45 it's just 90. <laughs> so by default variables in rust are immutable they're not changeable uh, so what we can do is uh, create a mutable variable and you do that by placing the mute keyword or, or mutt uh, let mutable x equal 90 and then x equals 45 if we just hit save and we come back over to our little our little console window there we go x equals 45 yeah so by default variables are immutable which is really one of i guess the most basic the first uh, interesting quirks about rust if you say that there's a variable that's 90 uh, you can't then say that it's 45 because you just said it's 90. <laughs> Um, what you've got to do is uh, declare the variable as mutable or changeable in other words using the uh, mutt keyword so i also want to mention that rust is uh, strongly typed and it's statically typed which means that variables have a particular type say integer or floating point whatever their type happens to be and statically typed means that the type doesn't change whilst the program is running yeah so that's really important too it's it's it's, it's the same in uh, c and c plus plus but uh, important to keep in mind that rust is strongly typed and statically typed anyway uh, i hope that was interesting to people a little introduction to uh, one of the interesting quirks about rust and uh, as well as how to install rust the compiler and cargo yeah good fun good fun <laughs> uh, i want you to have a really good day and thank you very much for watching adios <laughs>